Hi, I'm Dui. And I'm Minnie. And welcome back to the Comics Cube. Every second Monday of the month, reading straight from this book, a Smithsonian book of comic book comics. And today we are talking about, and we are reading out loud, the first appearance of the Batman. The Batman by Robert Kane, The Case of the Chemical Syndicate. The Batman, a mysterious and adventurous figure fighting for righteousness and app apprehending the wrongdoer in his lone battle against the evil forces of society. His identity remains unknown. The home of Commissioner Gordon, who at the moment is entertaining his young socialite friend, Bruce Wayne. Well, Commissioner, anything exciting happening these days? No, uh, except this fellow they call the Batman puzzles me. Ring. Hello, what's that? Lambert, the chemical king, stabbed to death? His son's fingerprints on the knife? I'll be right over. Talk about something exciting. Old Lambert has been murdered at his, at his mansion. I'm going there now. Like to come along? Oh, well, nothing else to do. Might as well. The commissioner and Bruce Wayne speed toward the Lambert residence. Hello, Sergeant. Everything under control? Yes, sir. We've got young Lambert in the back room. And after a thorough examination of the scene of the crime, the room becomes busy with the usual police routine. Well... I'm finished in here. Let me talk to young Lambert. Hello, Lambert. They say you killed your father. I didn't do it. Commissioner, believe me. I didn't do it. That's supposed to be a young man. Oh. You know, he says young man. Well, compared to him. I mean, I suppose. Calm yourself, my boy, and tell me all about it. Well, sir, tonight I came home early, and as I was passing the library, I heard a groan. I rushed in, and there was my father lying on the floor with a knife sticking up from his back. And as I rushed in, I got the impression of something leaping out of the window. I also noticed that father's safe was opened. I pulled the knife out of my father's body and turned him toward me just in time to hear him say, Contract! Contract! <laughs> and then he died. That's how I got my fingerprints on the knife. That's the truth, Commissioner. Hmm. Did your dad have any enemies or people who had an interest in his business activities? Not that I know of, except his three former business partners. Let's see. They were Stephen Crane, Paul Rogers, and Alfred Stryker. Commissioner, there's a man named Steve Crane who wants to speak to old Lambert. When I told him that Lambert was murdered, he got very excited and wanted to speak to you. This is Commissioner Gordon. What's the trouble? Yesterday, Mr. Lambert called and told me he received an anonymous threat on his life. Today, I received the same. That's why I called up, and I'm afraid I'll be next. What shall I do? Wait, and do not leave anybody in. We'll be over as soon as we can. What's that, Bruce? Ho-hum. I'll leave you here to finish your work. I'm going home. Meanwhile, Stephen Crane sits in his library with a feeling of impending danger, when suddenly... Ah! Uh, Commissioner Gordon's terrible at his job. Yeah. yeah. There is a sickening shot. Crane slumps in his chair, dead. The murderer rushes to, to the safe and secures a paper. Did you get the paper? Yeah. As the two men leer over their conquest, they do not notice a third menacing figure standing behind them. It is the Batman. The Batman! The Batman lashes out with a terrific right. He grabs his second adversary in a deadly headlock and with a mighty heave sends the burly criminal flying through space. The Batman swiftly picks up the paper that the murderer stole from Stephen Crane's safe. Meanwhile, the commissioner draws up in his car. Oh, that's a commissioner. Mm. It's the Batman. Get him. Mr. Crane has been murdered, sir. It's horrible. 
That's two dead partners out of the four that have received threatening notes. The other two must have received them too. Let's go to Rogers next. Well, maybe he wouldn't have died if you didn't tell him to stay put. Hmm. The Batman reads the paper he snatched from the killers and a grim smile comes to his lips. He speeds his car forward to an unknown destination. Meanwhile, Rogers, who has learned of Lambert's death by news broadcast, has already gone... Has already... Gone to the neighboring laboratory. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a grammatical error, isn't it? Maybe in the olden days, already was two words. To the neighboring laboratory of his erstwhile partner, Alfred Stryker. Hello, Jennings. I must see Mr. Stryker quickly. Won't you come in? Suck. Jennings... Stryker's assistant carries Rogers to the basement of the laboratory. Heh <laughs> heh. One more out of the way. Soon I'll control everything. This is the gas chamber I used to kill guinea pigs to experiment with. But now you are my guinea pig. Heh <laughs> heh. When this glass lid covers you entirely, gas will come through the jet and kill you. Heh <laughs> heh. How would you like me to do that? I just love how the he hey is in parentheses. You fiend! Jennings pulls a break, which starts the glass down over Rogers and certain doom. I'm going down now to turn the gas on. Sleep well. Heh <laughs> heh. isn't even consistency <laughs> in between panels. At that moment, the Batman leaps through an open transom. The Batman seizes a wrench from the table and leaps for the gas chamber. The Batman quickly plugs the gas jet with a handkerchief. As the gas chamber descends entirely over them, he then unties Rogers, and with a powerful swing, Jennings returns and is startled by the Batman. He reaches for his gun. What? The Batman greets Jennings with a flying tackle. Meanwhile, Alfred Stryker has heard the crash of the gas chamber. As he enters the laboratory... Rogers, what happened? Your assistant Jennings tried to kill me. However, Stryker has not noticed the Batman, who has secluded himself in the shadows. So he didn't get you after all. Well, I'll finish you, and then throw your body in the acid tank below. You? Oh, my hand! What's the idea? Why did he try to kill me? This rat was behind the murders. You see, I learned that you, Lambert, Crane, and Stryker were once partners in the Apex Chemical Corporation. Stryker, who wished to be sole owner, but having no ready cash, made secret contracts with you to pay a certain sum of money each year until he owned the business. He figured by killing you and stealing the contracts, he wouldn't have to pay this money. Hmm. A very clever scheme, and being the contracts were a strict secret between the four of us, our heirs on the outside world wouldn't know a thing about them. But how did you know all this? I secured this contract from one of his hired killers. Suddenly, Stryker, with the strength of a madman, tears himself free from the grasp of the Batman. Sure, I did it. But you won't send me to the chair for it. I'll... He's falling right into the acid tank. Yeah! Fitting end for his kind. How could I ever think you... Why, gone. The next day, young Bruce Wayne is again a visitor at the commissioner's house, who has just finished telling Bruce the latest exploits of the Batman. And then Roger said the Batman went through the skylight. Hmm. A very lovely fairy tale, commissioner, indeed. After Bruce Wayne has gone, Bruce Wayne is a nice young chap, but he certainly lead, must lead a boring life. Seems disinterested in everything. Bruce Wayne returns home to his room. A little later, his door slowly opens and reveals its occupant. If the commissioner could see his young friend now, he'd be amazed to learn that he is the Batman. Phoenix, watch for a new thrilling Batman story next month. About Batman. Just as we have included Superman's first appearance, we have also selected Bob Kane's first six-page account of The Batman, as it was called, from Detective Comics number seven, 27. 
and even less than the first Superman appearance is it, is it concerned with its hero's fictional origin. The details of the Batman creation are somewhat obscure and even controversial. National Comics editor Whitney Ellsworth frankly wanted a bizarre character who would be as popular as the company's Superman. He went to Kane, who had been working regularly with writer Bill Fing Finger. It's actually Finger. Oh. Like, like Zinger. Okay, because at first I was like Finger, but then I was like, this is an actual word. It's yeah, it's Finger. Finger. Okay, Bill. Finger, like Zinger. Finger. And between them, they worked out the Batman. A bad costumed Night Stalker had appeared more than once in pulp magazines on either side of the law. And Kane, incidentally, points to a striking analogy in his early Batman depiction and Leonardo's notebook designs for his flying devices. Batman was, by day, Bruce Wayne, a man with inherited millions, a rather bored character who was friend to the city's police commissioner, Gordon. Acting on information he casually gathered from Gordon, Wayne became the Batman by night a self-trained strongman, gymnast, and acrobat with high intelligence, a costumed vigilante who preyed on the fears, superstitions, and insecurities of criminals to stalk them and turn them over to the police, or occasionally, in the early days, to shoot them himself. Wayne, it was later revealed, had been orphaned when his well-to-do parents were killed in a street holdup, and he decided to devote his life to fighting crime, or rather, of course, to one-man vigilante justice. The features other regular characters, Alfred, Kane's butler, and Robin, the boy wonder, a young orphaned circus acrobat whom Wayne adopted, came later. So did the colorful recurring criminals, the Joker, the Penguin, the horrifying Two-Face, and the rest. And there, the inspiration, like the inspiration for the featured flat, angular, poster-like drawing style, was in part Chester Gold's Dick Tracy newspaper, newspaper strip. As Batman evolved, a brooding, threatening quality was sustained in its predominantly black nighttime panels. Kane had begun his comic book career at age 20. At first, it was mostly dev devoted to humor strips, plus a couple of thrillers he worked on with Bill Finger. He remained with Batman well into the 1960s. Meanwhile, the feature's quick success had led to several comic books, to the employment of artist Jerry Robinson to share the work, to a newspaper strip version to two movie serials long before the campy TV version of the 1960s. And of course, since the campy TV version of the 1960s, the Michael Keaton movies, the movies after the Christopher Nolan, Christian Bale movies, that movie last year or two years ago with Robert Pattinson. I think somebody made the claim that there have been more stories written about Batman than any other fictional character in history. Hmm. I'm not sure who else would even be in the running. I don't know. I feel like that's a big claim to make. Who, do, who else do you think would it would even be? Okay, I was about to go a little sacrilegious. So let, maybe I won't. I didn't realize I was being sacrilegious when I was in my mind. I'm not yeah, gonna that's, say that's, the, that's the only thing I can think of too. I wasn't even thinking of whatever you're thinking of. It was a different religion entirely. But in any case, definitely like, you know, mythology. Mythology, I think, is what I would think. Possibly, yeah. So, but let's say IP stuff. Okay, IP stuff. It, it's probably Batman, right? Like, even more than Mickey Mouse. I mean, define stories. A I unique all... telling of a narrative. Because, like, so many Archie stories, really. Oh, there, there are definitely more Batman stories than Archie stories. But, like, a single... Archie Digest has so many stories. Batman comes out once a week. I don't know how often the digests come out. Like once a month? I know, but there's so many stories within a digest. Fair enough, fair enough. What did you think of this first Batman story? Um, I want to know more about the contracts. About those contracts? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to show you something. Okay. Uh, you know how it said that Bob Kane w worked on this with Bill Finger mm -hmm. and Bob Kane is the only one credited mm -hmm. okay in that whole in that whole story so the two of them worked together and Bob Kane made sure that it was in the contract that he would be the sole creator of Batman mm -hmm. which is why these days if you see Bill Finger's name it's not Batman 
co-created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Mm -hmm. It's Batman created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger in small print. Okay. Okay. So what if I told you that this is Bob Kane's original sketch for Batman? Mm -hmm. He came up with the name Batman. He came up with this. And that's it. Everything else was developed by Bill Finger. But they worked together. I mean, supposedly. But it looked like the more and more people looked at it, it was more Bob, Bill Finger did the work and Bob Kane took the credit. Wait, 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 wait. Bill Finger is the one who came up with what? Bob Kane came up with a name the Batman and came up with that sketch. Bob Kane. Yeah. Oh. Bill Finger came up with the costume, Bruce Wayne, Commissioner Gordon, eventually Alfred, Robin, the Batarang, the Batmobile, the Batcave. Mm -hmm. uh, he is supposedly not the one who came up with the Joker, that's somebody else, but it wasn't Bob Kane. Mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. But they worked together. Like, they... They were in the same place. At the inception. Yes. I don't know. I mean, you know, sometimes that's just how partners, like, you need, like, maybe he... Maybe Bob needed Finger's initial thing to like riff off of to develop the Batman. Yeah. Backwards. <laughs> Their names are so similar. Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Bob and Bill. Bob and Bill. Um. Bob Kane would later on in his life be found out be selling like clown paintings, mm -hmm. and then it would be found out that he actually traced the clown painting. Wow. This was a theme throughout his life. That's so weird, though. <laughs> so he's like a hack, is what you're saying. He's basically he was basically a hack, yeah. Okay. He was basically a hack. So why would, okay, who was the hack, Bob or Bill? Bob. Bob is a hack. So why would Bill agree to it? Um. Well, from all, from all accounts, he was a really timid personality, ah. and was just happy to be working. But he like basically died in poverty in the seventies. He got no credit or respect for basically creating Batman. That's sad. Yeah, I thought so. Has he done anything else? Uh, he's one of the creators of the original Green Lantern, oh. which is pretty cool, but it's not Bat Batman. Batman, yeah, right. It's not the Batman. <laughs> it's, it's not the Bat hyphen, ma'am. Yeah. You prefer it with a hyphen, and the the. Of course these days it's just batman a compound word i think i prefer the modern batman compound word do you prefer the hyphen i think i i think i think i like calling him the batman but i can take or leave the hyphen yeah i mean it's fun to call him the batman because we call him batman Anyway, I also was like wondering, so this is the first issue. I was wondering if people who first read this didn't know that Bruce were really surprised when they re when they got the reveal at the end. Yeah, I would be curious about how people reacted to that. Of course, I think anybody who read this for the first time is probably no longer around. What year was this again? 1939. It would be very difficult to find somebody who read this off the stands. Yeah. Because a couple of years later, he was being made into a movie serial. So it would be pretty common knowledge. Yeah. Uh, at that point. So I don't know if you would be able to find a genuine reaction for that. It opens with a silhouette shot, which I think is pretty standard for Batman stuff now. So yeah. I think that has... And that kind of looks like the bat signal. Almost. It pretty much looks just like his logo right there. Kind of. Right, but see how there's that moon behind him? Ah, that's true. Oh, that's true. It was like, imagine that. It was like just a slight compositional thing away from being the being the iconic bat, bat signal yeah uh this story was a riff from you ever hear of the shadow no it, it was a movie with alec baldwin in the 90s yes okay 
The Shadow was a pulp hero, mm -hmm. like, in, like those tiny little trashy novels. Well, I guess they weren't really trashy. So The Shadow was a pulp hero that led to the creation of Batman. Mm -hmm. So this story was a complete riff on, on a classic Shadow pulp story. I thought that was interesting. Basically. So like there were contracts. So like something like there were contracts and there was a chemical factory or something. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the artwork? Um, I think it's fun. I think it's nice to look at. If you compare it to the Superman one that we read. I like it one. more. You like this one more? Do you not? I think the I think the crudeness of the Superman one was more enjoyable. It is cruder. And clearly the work of an amateur. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I think my eyes enjoy this more. Although this one I don't like. That's kind of a throwaway. Well, it's because he is trying to fit in that many words. That's true. Page. I have a question for you. Yeah. When you take a look at this iteration of Batman's costume, which is, you know, so we've got Batman right there in the background, right? So this iteration of Batman's costume where the ears are a little lower and his cape is... <laughs> I don't even know what shape that is. It's definitely not draping over him. Right? It's, yeah. It's almost like there's wires and, and stuff. Yeah, it's like wings. And uh, he has purple gloves that are only down to his wrist. Like, what do you think of that particular iteration of his costume? I don't mind it compared to any other iteration. I guess the gloves are a bit odd. The gloves are weird, huh? Yeah. You notice he has his utility belt, but it's not mentioned at all. What do you mean mentioned? Like, there's no mention of his belt being a utility belt or that there's gadgets in it or anything. So it's like just a part of the design to begin with, but it's not really... I think the whole thing where it's useful comes in later on. You don't think that they intended it for it to be useful at this point in time? I don't think at any time back then anything was intended to last. Mm. So I don't think any of them were planning ahead. I see. Well, you don't think like things were eggs, Easter eggs, or not Easter eggs, but would you, I guess eggs that would hatch later on. Uh, I, I guess know. it's possible. I guess it's possible, but at the time, you know, I think that uh, a lot of these guys really just wanted to get onto the next strip so they can make more money. I guess it's hard for me to think of Batman that way. Because he's such an integral part of a... He's kind of a of big deal. Pop culture. Yeah. Commissioner Gordon, of everyone that we've ever met in Batman lore... Commissioner Gordon is the only one that is there from the beginning. Hmm, true. I yeah. thought like I thought I had seen Alfred, but like it was like, oh wait, that isn't Alfred. But it seems like kind of like uh a... the butler. <laughs> yeah. Or did they, everyone always draw their butlers the same? It's like Smithers. Yeah, Smithers. Smithers, uh Cadbury from Richie Rich. I guess that's their whole thing. They're Alfred's just... a little different because he has a mustache. You know what? I've never actually seen or read a Batman comic. So this was your first Batman comic? Possibly. That's weird. Isn't your brother a big comic book fan? Yeah. He's never lent you anything? He's never shown you anything? I read a lot of comics, but I guess I've never been interested in reading a Batman comic. Because like, my first exposure to Batman was Michael Keaton. Yeah. What year was that? 1989. I, I was like very young. Did you like him? I did. Okay. Um, But like, I guess that's who Batman was for me. You ever see the Adam West TV show? No. Uh, you gotta see that. So fun. Okay. I, I trust you. Um... So there was, so, okay, I'll ask you. Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, Christian Bale, Robert Pattinson. 
So I haven't seen Robert Robert Pattinson. Oh really? No. Michael Keaton. Mm. Is that not a commonly accepted? I don't know actually. I believe it comes down to Michael Keaton and Christian Bale. Okay. Um I will say that my favorite actor to ever play Batman is Val Kilmer. But that's just because you like Val Kilmer. I do. And I, I think that if he had been given a more memorable script, he would have been the best Batman. Mm-hmm. But I don't, uh, as it was, I think it was a vehicle for Jim Carrey to be goofy. Oh, not forever. I actually don't remember Val Kilmer as Batman. I never really liked Michael Keaton as Batman for the same, for the, for the sole reason that, uh, I just thought he looked too small. Mm. But the I, I've heard, and I don't know if this is true, you know how um he's got a muscle suit on, right? Yeah. And apparently the reason for that is because he was too small. You couldn't do the Christopher Reeve thing where you put him in a spandex. In spandex yeah. because she was too small to be imposing. That makes sense. Mm. I mean in the 80s, a billionaire probably wouldn't be that buff anyway. I mean, think these days, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't see billionaires being buff now. Yeah. yeah. That's true, too. How much, how well does he fit? How well does this Batman fit your preconception of Batman today? Like, how close is he? Because the Superman one, you said he was a completely different character than what you're used to. I guess it's pretty close. I mean, at first I was a bit amused that Bruce Wayne was so bored. But then I remembered, like, he really would be. So I guess it's pretty close. Like, he's... That's the pretense. Yeah. It's so he can get closer to information without anyone thinking he's Batman. Yeah, he's a bored billionaire. A bored playboy billionaire. A bored playboy billionaire. Not a single woman in the story. That's the thing. No woman in the story. That's perhaps that's the only thing that's like surprising. Um, because in the movies it's always like a strong, attractive woman character. I mean, as as Batman canon has uh, gone on, he's it's become clearer and clearer that his weakness is beautiful women. Mm-hmm. So um, he's he has a son with Talia. Talia is the daughter of Ra's al Ghul, mm-hmm. who is a global eco-terrorist. And so is Talia, who is a global eco-terrorist. Oh, okay. And of course, he's best known for being with Catwoman. So apparently, if a woman is beautiful enough... He will overlook his fight for justice. So the other, see, here's the thing. The other place I know Batman from is the animated Justice League. Yeah. And I don't remember him being taken by beautiful women there, except for like, well, I mean, the tension between him and Wonder Woman. Ah, yeah. The reason for that is because um, they couldn't use Batman characters in the animated Justice League. Um, so there he seems a little bit almost ace a little bit a little bit except for the you know you want you ship batman and wonder woman right well i don't but in the enemy you didn't uh i don't really ship batman with anyone uh well only but so you're thinking of the one where he sings to her because yes. she's a pig yes yeah that's the best mm. that's the best episode it's cute yeah you know the 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 whole batman and wonder woman thing was an accident what do you mean plan it out what do you mean so there's one episode like early in season one um where wonder woman goes down in a crash or something and then they had batman go look for her in the crash and then they just decided to amp up the drama like have him be really worried about her just because it needed that for the story right but the moment that happened like the fans started shipping them mm-hmm. and then it was just it was perfect they just decided to run with it i see now i'm beginning to wonder why didn't i ship like superman and wonder woman i feel like that ship is so obvious that nobody actually ends up shipping it 
you know like it's just oh yeah well duh that's not fun well like a part of me would be like well because everyone knows it's superman and lois lois lane (laughs) there's that too yeah but kind of no point in chipping anyone with superman but she wasn't in the animated series either was she she was every now and then okay yeah so i guess that's but um there have been times in the comics when they've tried putting together superman and wonder woman and it never really happened i think there's something to batman and wonder woman where it's like they're they they're both in a way royalty so it's easier for the two of them to relate to each other than farmer boy was he not back on his planet anything he was the son of a scientist but i mean he was shipped out when he was a baby just like moses Mm. i always thought he was supposed to be jesus but he's actually moses he's created by two jewish people so definitely moses Mm. they turned him into jesus later on basically okay because marlon brando in that movie said my only son the moment he said, I give them you, my only son, it's, there's there's no going back from there. Yeah, okay. Here's my last question about this Batman. Mm-hmm. How do you like his Batmobile? Is that his Batmobile? <laughs> it's the original Batmobile. It's just a car. And a red one. <laughs> Isn't it great? It is just a car. Isn't, isn't it great? <laughs> just a car i guess it's more like inconspicuous it is more inconspicuous i think the existence of a really elaborate batmobile so like my friend paul likes to keep saying that (laughs) that as a kid he relates more to batman but as an adult he relates more to superman Mm -hmm. because superman's all about restraint right and as an adult you 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 understand restraint yeah it's more about the stuff that you don't do yeah. But as a kid and you you like Batman because you're like, oh yeah, I'm totally going to have like my father figure is going to be a guy that I can just give orders to. Mm. Uh my best friend is the chief of police. <laughs> I'm going to hang out with all these other kids, like all these robins. I'm going to have the nicest, sweetest car. And I'm going to have a cave with all of my toys in it. Yeah. Right. So I think that the existence of a Batmobile is actually preposterous in his fight against crime, but that's actually a part of what makes it awesome. Yeah. So you're saying he's a man-child. I am 100% saying he's a man-child. Yeah. I believe you agree with this. Like an arrested development situation. Like he stopped maturing when his parents died. He is eternally eight years old, yes. So he's like a Peter Pan. He is basically Peter Pan. Oh, and by the way, by the way, um, so there's a so sometimes he gets pitted against Captain America, right? What do you mean pitted? Because Marvel's perfect man is Captain America, and DC's perfect man is Batman. Is Batman? No. Human man. Yeah, but no. So nobody thinks Batman is a perfect man. Let us know in the comments. Oh my god. Really? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start over. So he gets pitted against Captain America, right? Okay. So what a lot of people say is something like, I prefer Batman because Captain America had to take um, drugs in order to be physically fit. But Batman just trained to be physically fit. Well, guess what? That's because he's rich and physically fit. Captain America was like a scrawny kid, undernourished kid from Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> so, and this guy is rich. He doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to do anything. He it can was... spend every waking hour working out and taking supplements. He's clearly got the best genetics. Like, to begin with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, it's just a huge part of, like, I think his appeal is like, it does feel like he was created by a child. Yeah. Well, they were like, how old were they when they made this? Like 20? Like in their mid-20s. They're older than Superman. Oh, they guys. were. Yeah. Superman, to the extent that he feels like a he was created by a child. Well, they were. Yeah. They, they were 19. Oh. 
This had a similar feel when they started talking about contracts. Because they don't understand. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> well, contracts. How did you know about the contract? I stole the contract. It's like, what? You know what else? What, what that makes me feel like? What? This comic 100% wants to drill it into my head that his name is The Batman. Because the narration is like every chance they get. This oh, one yeah. page calls him the Batman four times in narration and twice yeah. in dialogue. Yeah, well, repetition. But I mean, as if I didn't understand. <laughs> You'd be surprised with people. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say this again. The first lines of this panel are the Batman, the Batman. <laughs> it's true. There's not really much about the chemical syndicate. There's nothing about the chemical syndicate. So one thing I want to uh, do as we move forward with this is like, I think we've basically said the Superman one was pretty crude. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is a little less crude. Yeah. Uh, so I'd like us to take note of when it starts getting uh, less, you know, more refined, taken more seriously and so on and so forth, just to see like what effect that has. Um, on the reading experience okay okay yeah so what do you think final thoughts final thoughts i mean i think that like the script the script would you call it, what would you call the words in the comments the script the script yeah reads much better than the superman script even when you consider that the Superman one was made for newspapers? What have you control for that? It's hard to control for that. Okay. But there still is a lot of like... The, the whole thing about the... Con as, as someone who has had to work with contracts, reading about contracts in this way is pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> because they have no idea. Yeah. It's like a magic... like mystical word so two two more things by the way i forgot to tell you this um this is 1939 and there was a gas chamber so i think so apparently gas chambers are on people's minds even while hitler wasn't particularly mm -hmm. using it yet um and this would not happen now like uh batman would not let somebody die yeah so that was just how Batman was originally created. Well, like, if somebody died that he couldn't help it. I think he could help that. But, like, what if he couldn't? I mean, technically, he punched him over. Okay, that's true. But, like, what if he didn't? Uh, I think the general... So, that was a whole thing in Batman Begins mm -hmm. with Ra's al Ghul. Um, that he, he was falling off a train and Batman could have saved him and then chose not to. Uh, so the whole debate was whether or not he killed him. Mm -hmm. As a lawyer, what would that be? If you could actively save someone and chose not to. At no expense to yourself. I cannot give an opinion on this. Be because? I don't, I would have to like know more. And I don't really remember that part of the... What if you knew they hated each other? Well, I think... Okay, if we're going to talk about actual court, they would say that he pushed them. If, if someone was trying to actually get you, mm -hmm. they would say that you pushed them. Okay. So even if you didn't, that would be the argument that was made. I mean, something. Okay. I uh, greatly enjoyed reading the first appearance of the bat hyphen man mm. and uh we will see you again next time click like share and subscribe and let us know what you think of the first appearance of the bat hyphen man <laughs>